Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Sunday show. Take a look at uh, yesterday's satellite imagery. We'll see a uh, broad band of moisture streaming northward into uh, northwest Canada here, crossing the southeast coast and uh, front coming in from the north and northwest into the interior. Some more moisture back out to the northwest rolling in. Nice day over uh, Bristol Bay and uh, a lot of clearing here over the Gulf of Alaska. A uh, frontal system and low pressure area out over the western Aleutians, really not all that impressive with either the winds or precipitation, but uh, quite a bit of cloudiness with that. And then today, again, starting here in the southeast, uh, pretty good low pressure area bringing wind and uh, rain, locally heavy at times. Winds uh, 40 to 55 knots here rolling up as the low center rolls up the coast this afternoon, uh, just in advance of the front, uh, one of the buoys out there at a 50 knot peak wind gust uh, this afternoon. And uh, those winds, gales are out for the entire coast uh, through tonight till about after midnight, although the south coast should start dropping off to the 20 knot range this evening. Uh, even some good gales in over the southern areas this morning. And uh, northerly gales up across Lincoln Glacier Bay, 30 to 40 knots in those areas as that uh, pressure falls here to the south. Uh, got those winds going, but as this low lifts northward tonight, look for those gale force winds to return after they drop off and uh, pressure rises to the south here. We'll put 30 to 40 knot winds up into the northern areas tonight, and then those two will drop off late tonight into tomorrow. That front here in the interior continued to edge its way to the east and weaken this afternoon, but the trailing edge down into the Susitna Valley uh, late last night and this morning, brought half an inch of rain, over half an inch of rain to Talkeetna uh, during the uh, late night and early morning hours. That's ended since with some clearing, as you can see, with some downsloping northwest winds off the Alaska Range. But the uh, southern portion really just did a gentle dissolve here, but seem to be kicking off some showers over the Chugach Mountains at this time. And there are some scattered showers up uh, right up along that frontal boundary and still some areas of rain, light rain, and uh, scattered rain or snow showers up here to the north. Uh, some snow showers in towards uh, the Koyukuk Valley at Bettles. Clearing out here over the northwest, a lot of sunshine down across the southwest, Kuskokum Valley down into Bristol Bay, dry day Kodiak Island, not bad for the Alaska Peninsula, all the way up, uh, well, to the Seward Peninsula there. And uh, just a weak front out here to the west with some clouds and maybe some uh, moisture but uh, wind's not all that strong at 20 to 30 knots at the most, and that's right along this frontal boundary or back toward the main low toward Chimia. But you can see uh, partly sunny skies here in some areas with some clouds and winds quite light. All of the uh, Bristol Bay area here had some northwesterly breezes, 15 to 25 miles per hour. And uh, otherwise watching this next system already beginning to uh, affect the St. Lawrence Island area and the Bering Strait with uh, winds going south warmer air sliding up to the northeast here. So uh, the uh, cooler temperatures probably starting out as rain as the cooler temperatures warm with that uh, southwest flow and the associated warm front in advance of this uh, system moving eastward. On the chart today, here's a low center, uh, roughly about uh, midday today down here west of the Queen Charlotte's. That's since uh, up into this area here, moving up along the North Gulf Coast. And it looks like that'll make landfall 
uh, this evening, later this evening and tonight, somewhere between Elfin Cove and Yakutat uh, could pull inland there as far west as Yakutat, uh, more than likely somewhere here just uh, west northwest of Elfin Cove. But again, as that happens, then those gale force winds will uh, occur over the northern areas. They'll start to slacken off down to the south. And then as the front pushes through, the rain will change over to showers and winds slowly diminish uh, later tonight and, of course, into tomorrow morning. Otherwise, scattered showers here with some sunshine over uh, south central Alaska, the Copper River Basin. Some of this moisture edging in toward the McCarthy Kennecott area. Just some scattered showers, though. A few hundredths of an inch in the last 24 hours at Northway. And uh, Fairbanks, though, picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain due to this frontal boundary here, very slow moving, and some scattered rain and snow showers back to the west, ending with sunshine here farther to the west, then getting some clouds with this next uh, system here that will be tracking northeast, actually, and bring some gale force winds to the western Arctic coast. Otherwise, high pressure, northeast winds here, clear skies, or at least uh, mostly clear skies, just about all the way out to the Pribilofs. Uh, here coming around and then not even too bad down across the eastern Aleutian areas and you get into some areas of rain, fog and drizzle out with that uh, weather system staying out to the west. Well by uh, later tonight you can see this system rapidly pulls northward into northwest Canada but uh, upper level low pressure here over the Gulf of Alaska southwest flow that's going to uh, send several surges of moisture in the form of uh, showers there off the Gulf of Alaska in across the area, but the winds will be much lighter and of course the rainfall more intermittent, more showery. Some of these bands uh, feel like it'll just return to flat out rain as that moisture interacts with the terrain as it moves in. We'll look for some clearing possibly tonight and uh, you can see quite a few of these uh, moisture bands all the way down to the southwest, the main low here, northern Gulf of Alaska, and then the drier air uh, spreading south eastward there. It looks pretty clear over Kodiak Island. Lots of clear skies up into the interior, increasing clouds and a push of warmer air up to the northeast. So rain, rain mixed with snow, changing back to snow here behind the front with the low center. Looks like very close to uh, Cape Lisburn and Point Hope. Uh, this is about a 4 a.m. plot tomorrow morning there. Nice conditions up along the central coast and then these, this area of uh, snow here uh, getting more showery and diminishing as that whole system pulls off to the east. We still have some lingering showers here all the way back into the Tanana Valley, Eastern Copper River Basin. Some of those could be on the moderate side, but this will all be slowly ending from west to east uh, throughout the day tomorrow. Some good high pressure out here over the Eastern Bering Sea with the center at the surface right over Nunavak Island. And that's gonna be gradually edging its way eastward as well. So it looks like once this gets out of here, uh, will be under the influence, at least the southern half of Alaska, or the southern third will be under the influence of uh, high pressure for the next uh, several days. The way it looks right now is this system pulls off to the east and we'll see by tomorrow a uh, pretty good storm. Uh, look for some gale force winds there on the western Arctic coast down into possibly even the uh, uh, probably northwest of Kotzebue Sound, but definitely over the Chukchi Sea areas. Lighter winds, uh, really not much of a gradient at all in advance of that. And uh, as a result, that uh, southwest wind flow coming off the Brooks Range there, that's really going to restrict any precipitation and even cloudiness there to the east of that frontal boundary. But early on, still some lingering rain and snow showers here over the eastern interior. You can see less in tonight here over the Copper River Basin and the 40 Mile Country. And again, still a lot of showers rolling in on that southwest flow aloft here into the panhandle. Uh, could be a few on the moderate side, but those winds really diminishing, high pressure at the surface there, and a much slacker gradient uh, brings the winds down to uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour tomorrow afternoon. But down to the south, moisture streaming up, almost catching up with the showers here. Uh, although the storm down here to the south, now the jet stream is off to the east southeast and the cooler air is in over the area, that's going to mostly stay down to the south, but some of this moisture will threaten the southern areas uh, probably through Tuesday. And, uh, but definitely the bigger storm will stay down to the south and won't be rolling up with some more gale force and storm force winds with it. This frontal boundary tomorrow really weakening, just a chance of some light rain reaching the uh, Unalaska area or Nikolsky here, probably won't even be this far to the east tomorrow, and scattered showers and uh, light to gentle breezes out over the western Aleutians. Uh, some low stuff here along the uh, Yukon Delta coast, band of rain along this front as that pulls into the northwest there and the colder air spreading the snow in over, uh, which will become snow showers 
and then pull back to the northeast there across the Berks Range and the Arctic Coast. Again, clearing out behind the front, <coughs> excuse me, on Tuesday, some uh, light rain in the central interior, snow up to the north where the temperatures fall enough, and then uh, northwest winds coming down. Looks like uh, possible gales here on the central coast uh, there, at least for a short time during the day on Tuesday and uh, then lighter winds there behind the front as it exits the eastern Arctic coast, and then some moisture back to the west here, just uh, low clouds, fog, maybe some areas of light rain or showers, but nothing very significant. Really looks good here over the southwest interior, which includes Kodiak Island, lots of sunshine up into Cook Inlet, just a few clouds over toward Prince William Sound, and uh, mostly sunny skies here, even across the Copper River Basin. And now we have northeast offshore winds, high pressure up in over the northwest territories, and the strong low, you can see down to the south here, enough moisture to the north, probably a chance of rain. Metlakatla, Heidelberg, Cloak, Craig, and those areas, but mostly sunny skies up to the north there with uh, light northeast breezes looking really good. Temperatures down there today ranged uh, well from the lower 50s to uh, lower 70s. Two temperatures uh, not on here, 65 at Sitka, even with all the wind and rain they had there. Uh, reaching into the mid-60s, and Wrangell was the state's warm spot today with 72 degrees. Otherwise, Sitka had 49, 59 Cordova, 54 in Anchorage, about the same in uh, Homer and Kenai, as well as Talkeetna, 53 over at Golcana. 40 degrees today at Delta, 40, or 43 at Fairbanks, 40 at Delta, 43 uh, also here at, uh, let's see, that's Huslia, Indian Mountain, and uh, Tanana at 41 and cooler conditions here into the uh, Koyukuk Valley, 36 at Bettles, 28 Anatovic, up along the Arctic coast, uh, lower to mid 30s, uh, looks like the entire stretch of the coastline there, and then you get the 39 back toward uh, Cape Lisbon, lower 40s, Kotzebue Sound, 46 in Nome, same thing at Savunga, 50 degrees over at St. Mary's, mid to uh, upper 40s here along the mid and lower Cusacom and Yukon River Valley areas to lower 50s when you get out to Bristol Bay, 50 to 55 over the Aleutians. Lows tonight, uh, 20s, upper teens to upper 20s here over the interior. Warmer conditions due to the approach of that next system and more moisture southwesterly flow. So right around 40 for the lows are coming up to 40. Lower 30s here over the, uh, well, the Bethel area, mid 40s for the Aleutians and Bristol, or uh, for the Aleutians, Bristol Bay and the Bering, mid to upper 40s here for the southeast coast. And the highs tomorrow, uh, 50s for the most part here over the Panhandle, so cooler conditions coming in. Uh, upper 40s to mid 50s, the southeast part of the state, upper 40s out to the southwest or over the southwest, cooling into the mid 30s along the North Slope Arctic Coast and Brooks Range, mid 40s here over the northwest interior and Seward Peninsula. For flying weather, IFR leaving, trying to leave the southeast coast here and breaking out to some areas of EFR just off the coastline there where it's more showery. This area diminishing slowly from west to east and a good swath of EFR through this area. More IFR, especially along in advance of the front into the northwest interior, up to the central Arctic coast. Not too bad here over the Bering Sea, uh, but a lot of IFR expected out over the southwest areas in the western Aleutians. Passes uh, for at, or Anatovic. Starting out good, look for a deterioration of conditions, possibly down to VF or IFR by tomorrow as that uh, next system rolls in. Same forecast for Adigan, starting out VFR, but look for things to uh, disprove as the day rolls on. Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR, rainy looking good. Windy, VFR, but uh, Isabel, both Isabel and Mentasta, lingering marginal VFR possible along that eastern stretch of the Alaska range there. So the north entrance starting out uh, Marginal becoming VFR, Mentasta probably will be marginal and then become VFR throughout the day, probably by midday or late morning. Tanita though and Portage, all VFR. Chilkoot and White, IFR at times. And the freezing levels here, uh, here's the trough in the interior currently and down into the Gulf of Alaska, slowly trying to push eastward. The next cold batch up here to the northwest, higher pressure and warmer air aloft. Again, this area will be sliding eastward across southern Alaska, Monday, Tuesday, possibly Wednesday, and then a little cooler out over the western Aleutians. And for icing threats, maybe some uh, occasional widespread moderate here along and with the frontal boundary as it pushes in to the northwest interior tomorrow, and then trailing back out to the west, uh, areas of above 5,000 feet there over the western Aleutians, and then uh, some scattered areas of possible 
uh, mixed icing or rime icing here along the southeast coast, all this diminishing throughout the day. And the upper level wind flow chart, this trough here pushing off to the east, uh, high pressure slowly coming in, and then the northern branch of the jet stream uh, bringing several impulses in across the northern interior over the next few days, and there's a the next storm out over the western Aleutians. 3,000 feet or 9,000 feet west-southwest, uh, 20 to 30 knots here with that storm rolling eastward up along the western Arctic coast. Lighter winds with high pressure to the south, still northwest at least 25 across Kodiak Island tomorrow, and uh, diminishing, but still on the brisk side here for the uh, southeast coast. Again, northern areas at about 40 knots, but that coming down in the afternoon. Same pattern at 3,000 feet, but lighter on the wind speeds, but still 15 to 35, 25 knots up there with that storm to the northwest. And taking a quick look at turbulence, occasional moderate chop here with those winds and the gale force winds spreading east-northeastward here into the northwest interior in the Chukchi Sea, down into the Bering Strait, then cutting off about St. Lawrence Island, and then some mechanical turbulence here with those northerlies, especially over the mountainous terrains, western Alaska range down into the uh, Aleutian range, possibly the Kilbrook Mountain areas, and maybe a little light chop, Kodiak Island, southern Kenai Peninsula, and then it'll be most turbulent early in the day here over the northern southeast coast, improving throughout the afternoon, and some bumpy nuts and more turbulence coming into the far western Aleutians out that way. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Over the past few decades, the helicopter aeromedical industry has proven itself to be a very effective means of saving the lives of those who are critically ill or injured. However, during the relatively short life of our industry, far too many aeromedical programs, its crews, and sometimes its patients have fallen to tragic accidents. And the highest percentage of these crashes have been caused by human error. Now, often this fact leads us to ask the question, what was the pilot thinking? Why did he act the way he did? And what's even more confusing is why are the same mistakes still being made over and over again throughout our industry? As you go through this training and watch the scenarios, we suggest that you heavily concentrate on the error chain depicted in each scenario and how these steps ultimately lead to a crash. Ask yourself, what were the contributing factors? Were there opportunities to break this chain? Was there a specific culture in a program that affected the pilot's decision making? And finally, were there direct and or indirect pressures that influenced the pilot's decision? And finally, before we begin with the scenarios, there are two major points to note. First, none of these scenarios are contrived. Each contain multiple contributing factors and influences taken directly from industry accident and incident reports as well as confidential surveys recently completed by your peers concerning practices and safety problems within our industry. And second, this video would not be possible if it were not for the support of aeromedical helicopter operators, hospital programs, and their crews, as well as all of the other supporting agencies named in the closing credits of this video. These companies donated their equipment, personnel, and the display of their logos to demonstrate unsafe safety practices in the sincere hope that taking a proactive approach through this training will help to significantly improve the safety record of this worthwhile industry. Bobby is a pilot who was recently assigned to a contract that was nearly 20 years old. From the very start, Ken, the long-tenured lead pilot at the base, took on the role as mentor to Bobby. At first, Bobby was happy with this because the feedback from the vendor on Ken was very good. It was also immediately obvious to Bobby that Ken appeared to be the favorite pilot of the medical crew. It was also obvious to Bobby that things were done differently at this base compared to his prior assignment. For example, pilots were required to complete a computer form every time they turned down a flight for weather stating the exact reason and include a copy of the computer-generated weather reports with the form. 
Ken made a practice of closely reviewing all of the turn down flight summaries in the computer with the other pilots and sometimes questioned the no-go decisions. He also noticed that the hospital administration required the dispatch center to keep exacting records on each flight, when the call came in, and how long it took for the pilot to start and take off from the time the flight request came in. Additionally, the medical crews were almost all longtime team members and exhibited signs of impatience during Bobby's aircraft starting and pre-takeoff procedures. But what bothered Bobby the most was that during his first month at the base, some of his observations of Ken's actions on shift change were not consistent with the company's safety practices. Ken's pre-flight was minimal. He never observed him draining the sumps, closely inspecting the aircraft, or reviewing the maintenance status reports on the helicopter. He never requested any pass down information on shift change. Getting into the cockpit after Ken, Bobby would notice that the checklist was almost always misplaced and switches would often be in the incorrect position versus where they should be after shutdown. Recently, one of the newer medical crew members, Dave, who felt comfortable talking to Bobby, expressed that he was uneasy at times when flying with Ken. He explained that Ken seemed to accept flights under worse weather conditions than the other pilots would accept. Also, Ken often likes to fly much lower than the other pilots and seems to not mind going into much more hazardous landing zones for scene work. Finally, there was the time a couple of weeks ago when Ken took another med crew member for a low-level military-style ride in the company's spare while returning from the maintenance base. This crew member bragged how he got to sit up front while Ken flew low over a field, crow hopped over trees, flew down a road at treetop level, and did extremely steep bank turns. Dave added that he wanted no part of this type of activity, but was afraid to say anything because he was so new to the program and that the crew member, named John, enjoyed it so much. Not long after this conversation, a flight request came in for a three-point transfer. And during the deadhead leg home back to the base after the patient was dropped, John tells Bobby that he should do a low-level run to initiate Dave, which hadn't been done yet, and give him a thrill, just like Ken does for all of the new med crew members. Bobby, trying to act like a part of the team he just joined, dropped down lower, but still within company and FAA guidelines. Although Dave had indicated that this was low enough for him, John pushed the issue and challenged Bobby to be as good of a pilot as his boss, Ken. Welcome back, Lee in the sea ice. Uh, not much change uh, from what we've had, mostly due to the uh, poor conditions to observe it with. Still about 100 to 120 nautical miles north of Point Barrow here, although it did clear out up in this area, and that was shown to have uh, seen an increase in the sea ice, refreezing up through here, which is an uh, area to expect it to. So about to that time of year now, where overall the general trend will be toward uh, increasing the ice. And for the uh, southeast coast tomorrow, again, gales tonight here all along the coastline, ending first down along the south coast and then northward. Gales coming into the northern uh, inside waters there. Pressures rising rapidly should result in some 30 to 40 knot winds up through Lincoln on Glacier Bay. And then those will all be dropping down tomorrow, light and variable 10 knots, but still some small craft advisories hanging on to the north early. Then on Tuesday, uh, clear skies, northeast breezes here. 
uh, 10 to 20 or 15 to 20 knots in most areas. And for South Central Alaska, Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound, light north to northeasterlies, light northerlies here, uh, right down across Kodiak Island, and light east northeasterlies for the North Gulf Coast. And for Tuesday, light Virgo winds from the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound. Really light winds for the most part here, west to northwest, 5 to 15 knots. And for Bristol Bay, north 10 knots, same thing for the Alaska Peninsula, on up toward uh, Sitkanak. And then for Tuesday, really light wind conditions continuing here under uh, basically high pressure, west-northwest, 5 to 10. Out in the Aleutians, Fox Islands, winds will be light and variable to be coming south there toward Nikolsky at about 15. Maybe some 25-knot winds here out uh, in the west-central Aleutians. But uh, by Tuesday, 20 knots is about all I could find here on the north side of Adak and Atka. Otherwise, west-southwest, 5 to 15. For the southwest coast, uh, southwesterlies to variable, really light here, Cusquam Bay, 10 to 15 knots southwesterly, uh, turning back toward northeast, Gamble west-northwest tomorrow, light winds from the south from the St. Matthew Island areas across the Perblos Tuesday, light winds continuing, except easterly 15 for St. Lawrence Island, but uh, really light conditions here over the southeast bearing. And for the Arctic coast, uh, again, a little more complicated here, that low center coming in. So northeast 35, northwest 30 to 35 knots here, bearing straight up to Cape Lisburn. Easterlies or east southeasterlies at about 15 to 20. Then those swing around as the low center pulls eastward. Gale force winds possible on the eastern coast, diminishing back to the west to 10 knots there for the uh, Chukchi Sea. Tonight, there's that storm I mentioned coming into the northwest, gradually moving northeastward. Otherwise, this is a storm that came across the panhandle today. Still some showers going on down there, but a lot of sunshine here with the central interior. High pressure taking control of southern Alaska as these systems cross the northern part of the state. There's an These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.